In this lecture, we will detect and identify which banknote is detected. And these are the highlights of this lecture. First, we will replace the queue with a new prefab to show the currency name. And then we will create our first script, currencyscanner.cs, that will help us to identify the exact node. And big thanks to Patreon for this support. We have been able to create incredible content, explore new idea, and take this channel to new heights. Your contribution have made a real difference in helping us and grow and improve. Open up the Unity and before our project get expand, we will follow the proper naming scheme for our currency images. For this lecture, we will be adding two more currencies, Canada $50 and Pakistan 5000 rupee. Import the currency images and create a new folder for each country to hold their currency images. Create a new folder and name it as CAD. CAD is for Canada. Create another folder and name it as PAK. PAK is for Pakistan. Add this image into Canada folder and shift all the Pakistan currency into the PAK folder. Now create a folder for USA and shift the $100 into it. So now at this point we have 4 banknotes from 3 different countries. If your app is going to detect currencies for the 100 countries, it's better to arrange them from the start. In this app, we will be using a naming convention, three letters that will represent the country name, and then the number that will be the value of the currency. And at the start, we will be using a F if it's the front side of the note. For example, in our first entry, we have a front side of the US $100. So we have used F USA 100. That basically is saying front side of the US $100. And later on, we will be adding a data containers to handle country name and currency type. Currency type like dollar, rupiah, rupee, whatever the currency is. Let's add the new entry of Canada $50. Whenever we assign a new image, it takes the name from the image name. And of course, we can change it if we want to. So now all the new currency is in place. And if you remember, we are going to show the name of the currency on detection. And of course, for that, we need to replace the queue with the new prefab. And let's start the process of creating new prefab. Go to game object UI and text text mesh pro. When we will create this text, it will automatically create the canvas for it. So now you see we have a canvas and the text at the child of the canvas. As you know, we are going to use this text in 3D space. So we will modify this canvas for the 3D space. Let's change the view to see the size of the text. In my case, it looks it's not getting the proper reference to the shader. We might need to refresh it. We can resolve this by just reselecting the same shader. Next, we will be creating an image for the background of the text. Using plus sign, go to UI and click on image. For the source image, I will be using UI Sprite. I will be changing the color to black and making the transparency almost at half. Reset the image transform component and text transform component. By resetting, it will be positioned at zero. I will be changing the name to text PG. And now let's try to rescale the text. For now, making the font size to the 20 and we'll be making the alignment at center. As a placeholder, this will be a note name. Now resizing the background image. You don't have to create your prefab exactly as mine, but I will highly recommend you should develop the project with me. Now let's create an empty game object and name it as currency info prefab. This game object will be the parent of our prefab. Reset the currency info prefab and drag and drop the canvas into currency info prefab. Now I'm dropping a cube prefab to compare the size of the currency info prefab. It looks we have a different scale and position. Let's rescale currency info prefab to 0.001 x, y, and z. Now change the canvas render mode to the world space and again reset the transform component.
change the canvas rotation to 90 degree from x axis we are changing this rotation to match the bank note angles delete the cube and drag and drop the currency info prefab game object to make it a prefab now delete this currency info as well from the scene replace our new prefab with the cube We forgot to change the scale of the canvas, so let's make it correct. I'm dropping a cube to compare it again. We have a canvas scale at 1000, we need to make it 1. Just double make sure and apply the changes. So finally our new prefab is ready and it's time to create a new script. Let's create a script folder. and a new script name it as currency scanner let's clean up this new script we don't need these two methods for now add a text mesh pro AR foundation and AR subsystem. For the required components, we are adding AR track image manager. When you add a script which uses a required component to a game object, the required component will automatically be added to the game object. This is useful to avoid the setup errors. Create a AR track image manager and M underscore track image manager. We will basically request this component for the tracked images. Next create a awake method and awake method is called when the script instance is being loaded. In m underscore track image manager we will get the ear track image manager. Now create a own enable method. In this method we will subscribe to track image change. For subscribing we will write m underscore track image manager dot track image change plus is equal to on track image changed. On track image change is our custom method. Next create a on disable method. To unsubscribe the same method. We can unsubscribe using the minus equal sign. Now create our method on track image changed. the parameters search for air track image change events arguments and declaring it as event arguments now let's create a for each loop to traverse the detected images for the holder name it as track image and for the collection we will pass event arguments or event args actually event argument dot added that's mean whenever the image is added in the system or detected in the system we also have a different parameter of update or removed so update is used whenever the image is updated for this application requirement we just need to play around with the dot added here we are writing a new method update info and passing it a track image the track image will be a single entity in our case it will be a detected banknote we are passing track image to the update info just to separate the updation into separate method in parameter we are passing a track image that means the data of a single image whenever image will be detected ar track manager will create a prefab we have assigned to it to show the name of the currency in this line of code we will try to read the text of the field track image dot transform and get child at index 0 and inside that get the child at index 1 and get the text mesh pro component from that game object
and we will assign it to Text Mesh Pro UG UI. Using track image door tracking state, we can know in which tracking state the image is. Here we are saying if the tracking state node is equal to none, that means we are tracking. To get the name of the currency, we will type track image dot reference image dot name. It will give us the name we have defined in the XR reference image library. We can directly assign this name to the text field. But let's play around with the switch statement for a bit. Create a switch statement and pass a currency name and create a cases for the currency. As we have a four images in the image reference library, so we will be creating a four cases. And in the default case, we will write note in the library. This switch statement code is just a temporary code. Later on, we will remove this and make it fully dynamic using the scriptable objects and data containers. Take a look at the first case of the switch. If we are detecting a FUSA 100, we will be updating with the currency name. And if it doesn't match any, that means it's not in the library. And using this, we can do something different for a particular node. At this point, our script is completed. Let's take a look at overall script. And now it's time to attach the currency scanner to the AR session or region. Where AR track image manager is already attached, so these both scripts will work together. And now it's time to create a build and test our progress. Here we can see our app is detecting the banknote and showing the name of the banknote. On detection, it's grabbing the name from the reference image library. The next lecture, we will be removing the switch statement for data using the data containers. Every time we add a new currency, we don't have to write a new code. The best way of learning is by actually developing the project. So keep developing the project with me. If you miss something, you can pause or rewatch the lectures. And I'll see you in the next.